This is a simple watercolour painting to do, pier and boats. This is Western Supermare in the UK and uh, a few simple boats. It's late in the day, a late summer's day, light coming from the right. Quite a simple um, shape of the pier. This is the new pier, the old one burnt down, um, what was it, about 10 years ago or so. Um, yeah, it was big, uh, big local news round round us. But uh, this is the new pier, a lot more contemporary and modern and a bit larger as well, I think, than the old one. But some very simple boats here in the sheltered part of the bay. Gentle waves as well. We want to try and get the feeling of that evening light, a few reflections on the water also. Yeah, so my name's Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter, uh, tutor, run work workshops, online workshops, painting holidays. Uh, please go to my website, timwilmot.com, for more details. In this video, I'm going to go through the complete painting process, um, talk a little bit about the, the composition that we're going to move these boats uh, in, 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 in relationship to the pier, uh, go through the whole painting process with you, the outline drawing, the initial wash, going with the details, how I do reflections, um, and how to how to draw these very simple boat shapes as well, how to get in the feeling of these soft waves and some of the lights and the sparkles on those waves as well. Hope you enjoy it and let's get started. Paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. This is cold press. 300 grams, so cold press is the medium texture. Not too smooth, not too rough. And it's, my paper's taped down, it's 15 inches by 11 inches dimension. First of all, and it helps if I use the right end of the pencil. First of all, um, initial drawing. Quite a simple one, this one, because there's not too many objects to include in this painting. I do need to get the pier right with the slopey roof and the towers um, either end. And then there's a little bit jutting out towards the sea. Uh, indication of some of the columns and then the, the actual sea there, there's a line, there's a strong line across the middle of the pier. Continue on with the horizon. And the boats. Now I'm sort of zooming into the scene. Uh, if you go back to the source photo. By the way, if you want to keep the source photo up in view, just open up another tab or another window, and just run the video again and just pause it on the um, opening opening few minutes where I showed the um, the source image. That's the easiest thing. You can keep flipping, flip, <laughs> flicking back to it. Right, so I've moved um, the left-hand boat to suit the composition, just to balance it right sort of underneath the pier, a bit larger than the, in the photograph. And it's important to get the overall shape right. It's not too difficult, this one. It's, I think it's important to get the light hitting the right hand side of the covering the cabin, and then getting the curves right of the cabin itself and the, the top of the boat, the gunnels, and the angle of the boat. So because I'm looking a little bit down on the scene, the waterline is sloping a very tiny bit from bottom left to top right. So just look at, I'm just looking at those angles and trying to get them right. And then when I'm drawing in the second boat, likewise thinking a continuation of that line and the waterline and trying to get that angle. They're not, it's not um, horizontal, just ever so slightly going up from 
bottom left to top right and then a third boat the furthest boat have it sideways on pretty similar to the one in the photograph tiny bit of a cabin covered and then I need to have I think I need to have a, a larger right hand boat just to balance what's happening on the left hand side and I'll have it connecting with the furthest boat just so that we can or I can have a little bit of light hitting the top of this boat I'm drawing now against the darker boat in the distance. Now the water line of this one because we're looking at the at the back of it back of the boat um, the stern it's it's pretty much horizontal. Um, let's get in a little boy or a, a few boys just to again balance up the scene. We can place them anywhere we want to to even things up. So I'll go for three in this one, left, right, one in the middle. And then an indication of where the lines of the waves are gonna be, the gentle waves coming in. That's pretty much it from a, a drawing point of view. I could do I could add a bit more detail into the boats and the um, pier in the background. But that pier is in the background, so it's got to be kept fairly simple. Now I'm pre-wetting the paper with a soft mop brush. Could be any brush at this stage, just pre-wetting that sky. So I, I want to try and get in a nice flat, well, a nice smooth wash so I don't see any brush marks and going quite dark because the sun's coming from the right. It's late in the day. Uh, the, the lights, the setting sun is over to the right-hand side. I want to get it quite dark on the left-hand side and then going lighter. I use some. Um, bit of yellow ochre for the bright bright sky on the right hand side but much darker in intensity to the left. It's important I, I get it fairly evenly wet here, evenly damp. Not I don't want any puddles. The, the paper you might just notice it's buckling a little bit which I don't personally don't mind. Um, it's not it's not a massive size of paper so I don't really need to be too concerned with this. And the paint will dry a little bit lighter. So I just need to compensate and go in a tiny bit darker than, uh, than I think. Just said it's going gonna, it's gonna to be drying a bit lighter. So first of all, with the yellow ochre. Oh, let me, let me go through my, my palette of colours, uh, starting from the top. Neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, which I've just been using, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, which I'm just using now predominantly for the sky. And getting that sort of angular wash meet up towards the yellow ochre. Just let them blend in with each other. After the cobalt blue, I've got a ultramarine blue, then arizon crimson, Windsor, sorry, yeah, Windsor red. Uh, light red, cadmium orange, lemon yellow, and down the bottom I've got a lavender, which I quite often use. I'm using more and more now, actually, the lavender. Um, careful with my blobs of paint on the side of the paper on the masking tape. I don't want those to be accidentally coming back into the painting and creating nasty blooms. So in that top left corner, I'm actually going a bit, tiny bit thicker with the consistency of the paint. So more pigment to water there. And then I've just got to let this dry a bit, resist the temptation to go in again. Um, 
there's timing here is maybe quite important and uh, knowing when to stop doing that sky and just let it do what it's going to do. There is a slight slope on my board of about 10 degrees or so, um, not too steep. It's, it's actually fairly flat for me filming this video. If I wasn't filming, I probably would have a bit of a steeper angle, um, maybe 30 degrees, something like that. I know some people almost paint vertically and they do really well. Um, and uh, certainly makes for a very, well, a lot of the loose painters paint a, a vertical, vertical plane. Um, just drawing in here the edge of the, the shoreline, um, the edge of the, the waves coming in, and uh, just a, a little bit of an indication of um, the wavy edge of that shoreline. I'm actually including just a little bit more of the beach in this one than in the source photo. A brush I'm using is a Raphael Soft Aqua brush. Now I'm going to paint in the sea, starting fairly light in the distance, then coming down to the foreground, going a little bit darker. But thinking of the the silt at Western Supermare, um, it becomes a little bit browner, reddish towards the shoreline, just where it's, the, the turbulence is stirring up this um, the uh, the bed a little bit, and uh, and then to the to the beach. If you want to have a go at projects like this, then please take a look at my Patreon site. A bit like a, a small friendly watercolor community that I've um, that I run, and we we do monthly painting projects, and we share postings of our recent watercolor images, and we all chip in with a bit of encouragement. But mainly it's about the monthly uh, watercolour challenges, watercolour projects. So, um, and, it, and the actual, um, you're, the, you actually um, subscribe to a, a tier level and the donations are very great, gratefully received by me and they do help me to continue on uh, creating these these videos and go towards my the cost that I've got for... Um, the, all the equipment I've got and the different subscriptions to to create these videos. So, yeah, take a look. Uh, Patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. You'll find me up there. Right, back to the sea then. A little bit of burnt sienna, the blues... I'm using a softer brush here, smaller, softer brush. This is a Winsor & Newton um, squirrel mop brush. And just using the slope of the board and a tiny bit of a bead coming down to try and get, again, a fairly smooth wash. tiny bit darker as I come down and also just ever so slightly a bit more paint uh, paint ratio to to water I'm going over the boats um, I can lift out a little bit of the boats that are going to be catching the light afterwards but uh, just for this um, go over the boats it's a lot easier or I, you could have used um, or I could have used masking fluid but personally I've never never really got on with masking fluid and uh, uh, try and avoid it. I do use masking tape now and again if I want to block out um, an area. Um, that's another option. So darker, a bit more 
ultramarine blue. And if I leave little bits of the paper showing through, they can be, they can act as little bits of the, the water catching some, some light coming over from the right hand side. So ultramarine, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, bit of Windsor red, light red now to, I'm in this transition zone now where I'm going from the, the light blue into this sort of more of a, a reddish purplish um, color coming down towards the shoreline. So I'm just holding the brush at maybe, well, at some stage it's almost like a 45 degree angle where I can, where I'm dragging it across and not much paint comes out. So, um, and with the, with the speed of me, um, paint with, with the speed of my brush there, uh, it just creates a few little sparkles that, uh, will show through. We'll see how I get on. Um, yeah, so a bit redder coming towards the shoreline. This is the beach color here, which it's actually quite nice sand at Western Supermare. It's, it's, I think it's quite fine sand, um, always very clean. And uh, in, in where, the, where the light is actually catching the sand, it's actually quite a deep, rich um, color on this on this particular occasion um, but it, it is very nice sand it's just when you get into the water and you go a little bit further out it gets a bit it can get a bit muddy um, but that's just the nature of the area being in the uh, Bristol Bristol Channel so the sea wash is still damp and I'm using a synthetic brush, small synthetic brush, just to lift off that light hitting the cabin. It's not, um, it's not ultra bright, it's not white. And I think just uh, lifting out this way, I'm gonna get just about the right value for that cabin. And there's a tiny bit of light hitting that second boat and a bit of reflections, light reflections in the water below that. Likewise there for the cabin of the left-hand boat. Just continue on that light reflection vertically downwards and then there's a little bit coming off that right hand boat just there and below the way I'm lifting off is I I wet the brush first of all then squeezed out all of the water so it's basically a damp brush and touching a damp surface is then it's then going to gently lift off that paint I um, always find it's best just to dampen the brush a tiny bit. Uh, it just it just seems to suck up the paint a bit more. Right, get um, these boys done with a little bit of light red.
using that same small synthetic brush at just the top tops of those boys and I'll do the reflections later on. do need to let the paper dry out uh, perfectly uh, now and I'll speed up the process by using a hairdryer. This is the ultra silent model as you can hear. <laughs> um, just particularly drying the horizon I've got to make sure that's really dry because my next step is to work on that background and then I'll come basically further forwards as we go on and if the paper was buckling a little bit beforehand with this drying now it's going to go back pretty much flat Just hovering that drawer about an inch or two above the surface. Until it's perfectly dry. As well as Patreon, I do run, separate to Patreon, I do run regular or fairly regular watercolour workshops, live online work, watercolour workshops. Just go to crowdcast.io slash Tim Wilmot for the next ones coming up. They're normally every month, nothing to do with Patreon. Open to any, uh, open to painters of any level, beginners, advanced, um, and over a couple of hours. I choose different subjects each, uh, normally every month. Um, main, mainly landscapes, street scenes, seascapes similar to this so uh, if you'd like to participate and join in and want more information please go to crowdcast.io slash tim wilmot you'll see that you, your bills will be able to take part in or, or watch replays of previous workshops um, there's loads up there and see the future one the next one coming up right this background i'm just starting off with the the, the beach behind the pier. And the beach is quite a long beach. Um, maybe it's at least a mile or two, at least a mile or two, it, uh, and quite flat as well, um, going around the bay. But in the distance now, we've got a tiny bit of a headland that comes out over to the right. We, we can just see a very thin slice of land here and I'm using the my squirrel mop brush a little bit more carefully to get in that uh, background coastline and below that I've got that white that very light area where, where I started the the uh, sea wash I was just a little bit below the horizon so I've got a, a bit of a white um, a light area so just a it's, it's not in the photograph but I just think it, it just creates a bit more of um, um, an atmosphere of the bright light coming in by having that very light horizontal band now for the pier and the most important part is really carefully doing the curved roof and then down to the towers either side and this brush is quite good or brush like this is quite good because you you can get a good edge to it you can see I'm just turning the brush 
a little bit now and again just to use that flat edge. It's almost like a, a, a small flat, uh, small flat brush. Cerulean blue. Pick up a bit of the dark stuff at the top. I've got these three mixing wells, and generally at the, on the top one I've got darker um, paint, and the middle one is generally my cools. I don't always follow this, by the way, but the middle one, generally the cools, blues and things like that, um, because it's fairly close to where the, the cools are. And then the bottom one are the warmer mixes. Tilt the brush again, just to get in a little bit of a a highlight and a diagonal shadow coming across the the uh, end of the pier and we've got a sort of tiered structure coming out of the uh, end of the pier I don't want to make the pier too dark, otherwise it would just look as if it's coming forwards a bit too much. So I've got to be fairly careful with not making it too dark. Now swapping over to my small synthetic brush, which is rapidly becoming my go-to brush, and it's probably one of the cheapest brushes I've got. It's about I think it's about two or three quid, two or three dollars. Um, there's what I'm painting in now is is a sort of covering going down. So the entrance to the pier is over to the left, and then you've got this long pier to the building, um, long sort of promenade uh, to the buildings in the middle, and there's there's some some of the supports to that central covering are, are more dense than, than the others. Uh, I'm just, I just keep looking at the photograph just to get the impression of these horizontal uh, bands of dark. The Vertical supports as well, I'll do those very shortly. Uh, just get get in the, the uh, base of the pier correctly, first of all. The paint here is actually not too watery, it's fairly thick. Have a little bit of light hitting the edge of the pier there and come over to the end. Some vertical supports now. And I'm not going to be painting in solid lines here. Just uh, drag the brush down a bit so we can see a few gaps. Maybe the light's hitting parts of these columns and it just sort of fades into the, fades into the background. Now the um, water or the water, the, the sort of shadow, if you like, below the pier. That's there. Then I'm going to be drawing in the, the vertical supports to join the two up. 
little bit darker underneath the pier, immediately below the pier. Then it's a bit lighter um, either side of the, the pier building. Neutral tint, Alison Crimson, Ultramarine Blue. Check my brush, check I've got a good flat edge to it. This this brush actually lost its point a long, long time ago, but it's actually um, almost got a, a very small a flat edge to it, which is, is actually quite good for doing, I find quite good for doing these little vertical lines. When there's not too much paint on the brush I can uh, I can actually get quite a narrow line so some of these vertical supports are closer together so actually quite dense almost solid and then a little bit more widely spaced in other areas Continue on from left to right. Sorry if you can't see exactly what I'm doing here uh, with the angle of the camera. Um, yeah, just a little bit more dense in places. Leave, then leave a little bit of a gap, then maybe go denser again. and perhaps a little bit more gaps between them towards the end here, just where um, we're coming out to the end. Now there are some, I need to strengthen up some of the details of the pier, above the, the pier building above, um, the towers, this side of the towers, little, little uh, horizontal mark there. Um, Strengthen up, there's a darker line on the roof. And then halfway down, or almost halfway down, quite a strong horizontal with some square or rectangular openings or windows, I guess they are. Um, just create a few of those not completely solid squares or rectangles, just um, lightly painting these in. It doesn't matter if I completely have a solid square or rectangle. If I, if I, did, if I did sort of have a solid square or rectangle, I might just bring it too far forwards, which I don't want. I want to push things back. A few more details on the towers. A few vertical lines on the towers, but not too strong. Maybe a flag or something on the top of one of those towers. Some final details to the the walkway, the pier. Next, I want to go back to the sea and start creating some waves. Uh, just a tiny bit of very, very light reflection to the pier building. Not too dark. Using the flat edge of that brush again. Just 
just a few horizontal gaps where there's uh, some waves coming in. Now turn the brush at 90 degrees and now some more horizontal marks. Fairly light in the distance but then coming a bit darker again like I did the, the wash of the sea coming a bit darker towards the foreground and change to that reddish color again. And I find a, a soft brush like this is quite good for doing waves, getting very soft sort of, uh, what I'm gonna be doing in a minute, some elliptical shapes um, to create some of those, uh, when you look at the photograph, there's, there's definitely some elliptical shapes in the in the darker waves, the reflections. But in the distance there, mainly just some ragged horizontal lines. And they're going to be quite horizontal in the distance, but angling down at sort of going from top left to bottom right, just angling slightly as they come down to the bottom left corner. Tilt the brush just to get that edge just right. Check my edge and continue on up to that boy, up to the boat. And then on the other side of the boat, just go lightly over that lighter area there where, I, where I've got that light reflection from the second boat. Continue on over to the right hand side, connecting up these different shapes of the boats and the boys together. Here I can start now creating these elliptical shapes a little bit more. Just where the waves are getting, we can see a bit more of the form of the waves and there's more interesting shapes being created. And then transition into that warmer color for the, for the nearby, for the uh, waves in the, in the foreground. Fairly soft marks here, using the brush, lightly dragging from left to right, trying to observe the angle and the, the shape of the reflections in this wave. Over to the shoreline on the right. Perhaps a, a softer wave here, very lightly dragging the brush. And a few little reflections on the extreme right. over to the edge, over, the, over to the edge of the shoreline. Now, 
now I'm going a bit darker. Use a bit of lavender. Lavender's uh, the lavender I've got here from from Sh Shinhan. I think it's quite sort of opaque, and it gives a, a nice denser covering for these nearer waves. So a lot darker now. Uh, I need to be even more precise with with my brush marks. Getting in these elliptical shapes, just trying to follow the contour of the wave. And it's it's not a big wave here, they're, they're very gentle waves coming in. Cerulean blue, another opaque colour. From, so I'm painting from that shoreline into the wave. Angle that brush. Not try and overdo things, not try and over, overwork it. few darker waves between the two here. A few darker reflections between the two waves and then just continue a little bit over to the shoreline. Now the, between the shoreline and the beach is, because it's wet, is a good bit darker. So ultra in blue, a little bit of that light red. Again, I'm glazing over this beach here, this beach color from the shoreline to the beach where it gets a bit drier. And then over to the right, then come back down, about a 45 degree angle. Down to the edge of the paper, over, over the edge, onto the masking tape, tiny bit of dark, darker, thicker blue on the very edge of this. few more darker areas there in the bottom left corner. Don't want to overdo things, so very conscious of knowing when to stop. Let's have a bit of a dry brush mark on the beach just to give a bit of texture to the beach. So I've nearly finished with the C before I go on to the next step, which will be the boats and their reflections. So boats will be first, then the reflections. Quite narrow these lines in the distance, not too thick. Thicker, thicker marks coming towards me, narrower in the distance. A 
I'm just noticing a few little darker reflections just underneath the shoreline. So while that darker band is still damp, I can go in with a darker, thicker colour to get a sort of soft edge to it. I'm starting with the boat cabin on this left-hand boat first, getting the interior darker colour first. And that will give, instantly it'll give a bit, bit of form to this cabin. Again, I'm looking at the photograph just for, for guidance on the exact, because my, my drawing wasn't too precise, so just uh, going back to the photograph to get in the angle right and the distance, the size of those windows, and how much of the interior can we see. Um, a little bit more inside the cabin, but nothing at the back of the boat. Then a little bit on the bow, just a tiny bit of shadow there, or darker, a darker colour where the, the light's not hit it, the light isn't hitting it. I'm going back to my mop brush now for the actual hull. I think that the brush I used just used then was a bit too small. I need uh, a, a larger brush for this stage. Fairly dark blue. And starting from the left hand side being careful to get a bit like the roof of the pier, a gentle curve and start from the top, work my way down to the water, the water line. It's a bit darker at the back, a bit tiny bit lighter going over to the right. There are a couple of um, boys or, or something floating in the water next to this boat, so I'm going to get those in as well, just by doing a bit of negative painting around those. And now for the reflections. And there's sort of... Um, quite a, a rich reddish brownish colour if I could describe it as that adding in a bit of lavender as well for good measure um, light red burnt sienna and as I add this in now it will the blue will very slowly blend in and and then thinking about these reflections now. So a, a bit more dense near the boat, but then coming a little bit more sparse, sparsely spaced as we come further down.
and then add a few more just a little bit lower down. There we go. Just a few more there. Second boat, start with the inside of the boat. Quite dark compared to the, the actual side of the boat, so dark inside, lighter on the outside. As I did before, start from the left, then go a bit lighter over to the right. The further these boats are away, the less are uh, of their reflections we see. Uh, let's put in this furthest boat now, where we're just seeing the side of that one. Maybe there's a, an outboard motor on the back, um, along the water line, where we're meeting the top of this right hand boat. There's the bow of the furthest boat and no reflections to speak of on that one. Just a, a tiny bit of a reflection on the second boat You can see I can't, I can't resist the temptation of going back into those waves again. right hand boat starting with the covering and create the impression of the this tarpaulin covering on the top go a bit darker pick up some neutral tint and then right hand side
back of the boat. Fairly horizontal waterline. Over to the right hand side. I'll keep that little white horizontal line at the uh, the water's edge. Just uh, that was purely accidental, but um, looks quite nice as a bit of light hitting uh, hitting the water. Right reflections of this boat, like the left hand boat, we can see a bit more of them. Denser, denser towards the boat, becoming a bit more erratic as we come further down. Now the darker reflections for the boys, so just a, a darker colouring, darker red. One, two and three, just a tiny bit of reflections for those. Back to my small brush again and add in a few more details to the boat. It's a darker water line, just makes those two floating objects a bit stronger and across the top of the boat. Perhaps a little tiny aerial or something. And then there's a structure above this boat. I guess it's um, some sort of fishing boat for some fishing nets maybe. Uh, add a few more darker lines on the inside of that boat. Along the top water line. And the furthest boat adding a bit of water there to just to try and soften up some of those folds in the tarpaulin it would just looked a little bit too strong to me keep it light on that right hand side a window on this left hand boat it's quite light because it's catching the light so it's not too dark And let's have some more lines and a rope maybe for this boat here. Perhaps it's the anchor or something. 
just little line to connect it with the water. Use my finger to, on that left hand boy, just to lift off some of the shadows, the reflections are a bit too strong. Now back to the shoreline, a bit of seaweed or something on that shoreline. Add a tiny bit of light shadow to the left hand side of these two floating objects. Now with some white paint, same brush again, my small synthetic brush, adding a bit of light. There could be some sparkles on the shoreline, or well, there are some sparkles on the shoreline, just catching the light, just a few little scrapes of the white paint to indicate that on the edge, just a tiny bit there, strengthen up that. water's edge. A few little dots here and there as well. And just a tiny bit on that boy. And that one, just a little bit on the leading uh, side of it, the right hand side, not too much, and define that boat a bit more, this one Tiny bit of white just on the right hand side of that rope. And this is this is almost really dry white paint there at that uh, on just on the top of those waves. And just a little bit on that right hand edge, strengthen up that as well. As I normally do at the end of my painting process, just a short self-critique to see how it went. So it's 
uh, the Western Supermare Pier and some boats. I changed the composition a little bit to bring the boats um, a little bit more over to the left. Uh, I also introduced a few boys. Um, we can see a bit of the pencil line showing through, which I don't actually mind too much. Um, maybe a bit too strong on the left-hand side there. Um, just detracts a little bit from that left-hand side. But overall, quite happy with the composition, the layout of the boats, making them a bit larger, a bit more important in the in the overall composition. And then the background pier, keeping that really simple, um, not concentrate on any detail, just getting in the main shape of that pier. Um, and then the way that I did these little supports, these, these columns, um, some are some are dense and then wider areas in there as well uh, just to give the impression of um, of the the density of those supports the waves fairly light um, it's not too the waves aren't too high here it's quite calm calm conditions um, oh i should have said the sky with the sky pre-wet it um, that came out okay. Nice transition, graded wash from the dark to the light. Um, maybe a little bit too yellow there. Could have been a bit lighter. A um, bit of light in the distance. Um, and then the sea itself, uh, quite happy with the reflections. And the trying to get into the, the colour of um, the the near shoreline at Western Supermare with, with this, uh, with the silt being churned up a little bit quite happy with that as well so there you are uh western superman and pier and boats thanks for watching catch up with you on the next video